create the full circle. She has the power to create, nurture, and also to transform. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Amazing Amazon. This is the program for everybody. This is the program for young, old, teenagers, childs, widows, and everybody. But on this program, we do want to bring in strictly female guests. Obviously, we are not trying to be gender biased, but we are trying to show to the world that there are different excellent women flourishing in different sectors of the economy. And as usual, we have a female guest. A, uh, I don't want to start casting her now, but she's a great lawyer. She's everything, everything, everything. Last week, we talked about uh, uh, we talked about business marketing with fabulous Julian, and I'm very sure you enjoyed the episode. Well, today I have with me a very human, passionate about humanity, follows uh, passionate about humanity, widows, special needs children, physically challenged and cancer survivors. So she is a lawyer, uh, a civil and family lawyer. She's a disability advocate. She's the founder of Super Parent Foundation. She's a businesswoman that has two flourishing businesses among others. Join me to welcome Mrs. Mofolua Shop Monisola Lihase. Good day to you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you it's very much. To have you on Same the thank you. While I went through your 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 art, you put your name on Google and a whole lot came out. And I'm like, wow. Oh, wow, this is a whole lot going on. Excellent work for a woman, which is the main purpose of this program. Now I like to ask, you're doing so many things at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you're a woman. How do you do it? What grace? How what strength? What is your strength? <laughs> how are you doing this excellently well? Doing this excellently well, doing the I saw your product, I saw your, your fans and all of that, and I'm, I'm forced to ask, how do you do it? What's your strength? What are you drinking? Is it the water? Is it what, <laughs> what are you using to, 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 to hold yourself firm? Like you said, I'm just a woman. Mm -hmm. We are made to be multitaskers. We are made to be flexible. Mm -hmm. We can stretch. We can do so, so many things, mm -hmm. as long as we put our heart into it. Mm -hmm. I just think it's just something natural for a woman to do. Mm. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's something natural today. Yeah. Well, now let's start. Let's go straight into the conversation. Can we meet you? Can you please shed a light briefly on your childhood and how it's shaping or affect either positively or negatively who you are at the moment? Well, um, <laughs> I've always been a very passionate uh, child, um, girl child. Um, very emotional, mm -hmm. love to help people, and empath. Mm -hmm. I tend to take other people's pain. Mm -hmm. That's just who I am. And um, it has shaped me to be who I am today. I remember asking my mother, you know, when you go for a debate, I mean, in school, you know, um, they will choose children based on their talent. They go for debates, they go for this, for that. They, they will usually ask us, what is your talent? Mm. I looked at myself, what is my talent? Mm. Actually, I, I was the reserved you know, child mm, and all that. I introverted, child. yeah. You know, so I go to my heart, my mom. I remember I was just six years or so. Mom, what is actually my talent? You know, I'm not bold enough to do debates and all that. And she said, you're just a ch generous child. Mm. <laughs> I said, is that a talent? <laughs> she said, yes. It is not, it's not everybody's thing. Mm. It's not something that comes naturally to everybody. Mm. To me, that is just who you are. And I kind of held on to that, mm. you know. And it, it, it has formed so, it has formed me. Mm. Secondary school, you know, to university. I just grew up like that, you know, being able to give out. And still feeling myself in. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Being able to give out, still take care of myself, yeah. being able to put other people's needs, you know, be, but still take care of myself. Mm -hmm. That's just what I've been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm forced to ask that are you a family oriented person? Yes. Oh, great. Yes. Was that what led you to studying law? Mm, kind of. Kind of. I love to um, solve problems. Mm -hmm. I love to give people hope. I don't you think you would have flourished well in the teaching sector, not in ah, the law? I'm not sure. <laughs> yes, I teach somehow. Okay. You know, because um, because of the special needs children. So somehow I teach. 
um, I won't call myself a therapist, but I help parents and I also help children. So somehow it's kind of, um, you know, the educative line and all that. But I'm not sure I'll flourish. I don't think I have that patience. Mm. So, as a teacher. Right from, uh, your bio said you are a lawyer and you focus yes. on family and civil law. Yes, yes. Right from your childhood, your secondary school level, was that what you always wanted to study? Or, oh, you wanted to study something else and maybe deal with one or two situations, you yeah. had to fall back then, no? Actually, I wanted to study, um, I think, medicine. Okay. You know, but in SS, so thereby I had to change. Yeah. I was having some <laughs> kind of emotional issues that like I said, I'm a very yeah, emotional person. person. Mm -hmm. So and I just had to change and I saw that I loved government. Mm -hmm. I know and I went for guidance and counseling, you know, they started asking questions. That my father is actually a lawyer too. Oh lovely. But, yeah, <laughs> but I, I think it's more of an hereditary stuff. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the people believe so, maybe, okay. maybe, because we are kind of alike in um, many ways. Okay. And, uh, you know, and when it's, you know, met in, you kind of solve people's problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do I solve problem as a lawyer? And then they broke it down to me, say, okay, I think there's something I'll be good at, you mm -hmm. know, it's something that I will be passionate about. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Now, I asked you the other time that you're doing so many things. Let me ask you now in precise terms. Mm -hmm. How do you shuffle between your business, your law profession, then running a foundation together? Hmm. 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 The deep side <laughs> means it's a whole lot of stress. You, you know, it's just maybe one step at a time. You know, there, there's no way one would Which wouldn't. did you start first? Which did you start later on? Which did you add along the way? I think, uh, okay, I'm a lawyer. Yeah. Right. I'm a family person, I'm a mother, and of course that one is um, no. basic, yes. Mm -hmm. And I am a lawyer. I think when it comes to law profession, it comes for those that are really passionate about law. It comes with the humanitarian, you know, side of it. So some I became an advocate, you know, speaking for widow. Well, being a lawyer. So you, you mean know, you did lots of pro bono cases? Pro, uh, yes, okay. a lot of pro bono cases. You know, and I got to see what people were going through. Mm -hmm. You know, so many fights, so many battles, so many things they couldn't handle on their own. So it's just not about me doing my job. Mm -hmm. It was more than that. Okay. So and then, thank God for social media. Mm -hmm. When there's an issue, people would normally tag me. Uh, sexual abuse, domestic violence, all that and all that. So I had no choice to become an advocate, to speak out against um, no vices and all. So kind of the law and the humanitarian side of me mm -hmm. just went. And all of a sudden, I came across um, a woman. It, it was a story that I'm now coming to the uh, special needs children. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I saw a post. The woman was talking about um, a daughter who had um, who, who was deaf, and you know she needed hearing aids, and you know uh, the responses we were getting were ah sorry it is well go to God one church you. God bless you blah, blah. pray here pray there pray. Ah, you know and she talked about um, the discrimination she faces from her family from so I had to just inbox her, you know I've I know that we have people with different abilities, yes. you know, and all that. But I've never really sat down to think they are kind of different from, her, from us. My best friend in secondary school was a polio, uh, is a polio survivor, oh. you understand? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm always helping her out. She, she helps me too. I never saw her as less. Mm. In fact, when it comes to talent, she's more talented. So, you know, when she told me her story, how um, her family members discriminated, stigmatized her because she has a child with disability, it was strange to me. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I digged in deep and, you know, she said a whole lot. And then I started posting, you know, like I'm, I'm an advocate. I started posting, I wanted other women, other mothers, even fathers to come out. I wanted to know what is happening, what they were going through. And that's how it started. Oh, you never had a special child? Or you don't no, have I don't have a special child. Oh, okay. So your special interest, uh, your interest about special children came from 
your best friend in school or the first woman that came to you? Well, she, she claims that she claims that it was <laughs> it was because of our relationship. But seriously, I never linked it. Okay. okay. Like I said, I just felt you're human, I'm human. Mm -hmm. There's something different. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? It may be physical, mm -hmm. it can be mental, it can be yeah. emotional. We are just all the same. Yeah. You understand? But it was later, you know, my friends in secondary school would link the eyes because of this person, because mm -hmm. I never really linked it like that. Mm -hmm. You understand? I just felt everyone should be treated, you know, equally. equally. Mm. Notwithstanding, um, maybe one difference or one challenge. That's just what I felt. So that was what led to, you've been, okay, now I'm trying to go back to your law and your interest yes, in yes. special child. Yes, yes. When you finished law school, yes. why not, why did you choose family law? There are different fields in law. Fine, you're a family oriented mm -hmm. person, yes, you're interested in helping people, mm -hmm. but you know, in the field of law, mm -hmm. money comes first before interest. <laughs> so why didn't you choose other fields of That's law? Why did you decide money. to just choose family law? Considering the fact that Little or no pain might come out from it. Like, uh, well, you know, growing up, it, you have different experiences. You know, as a family, as a child, mm -hmm. like I said, mm -hmm. I was a very emotional child. So I saw a lot of things. My friends, my family, I just wanted to make a change. Mm. You know, especially when it has to do with children. You know, the impact um, these things has on children is always very great. The family values, conflicts, and all that. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to do something. Now, I, my first something wasn't about money, just mm -hmm. to make an impact. So that was why I went into family law. At I specialized point, there. At what point did you feel like, okay, apart from me answering these people online mm -hmm. with my personal and those, at what point did you feel the need to have a foundation that will focus basically on them and you used your name, uh, they used the special child name and not a uh, uh, foundation, follower, yeah. I understand. Okay, so when I posted the story of that lady and, that, and I wanted other women to, you know, mothers especially, you know, this is affects mothers more in Africa yes. because they believe um, the mother is a child of, you know, a child that is mm -hmm. um, different. I'd be a parent of. So I told people to come out. I wanted to hear their stories. And you know, a lot of mothers came, a lot of people came out, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I said, okay, let us form a group. Mm -hmm. Just to share experiences, you know, like a support group. It's not about money, it's not about, let's share. I, I believe sharing experiences, it heals, mm -hmm. you know, and you're able to voice out, you know, you're able to speak out, you speak your mind. Mm -hmm. it, it's part of the healing process. Yes, you understand? That, it was just, that was just my plan. Mm -hmm. And before I knew it, from 200 members to 300 members to... 5,000, I think we are 12,000 members. Whoa. You know, I just felt there's something huge here. There, there, there's, uh, there are a lot of things to be, um, um, what, would, uh, there's, uh, the, what would I call it? Um, what word would I And there's a it? calling for yes. you in this field. What calling for me and for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Because I believe this is not, this is not an area a lot of humanitarians and focus on yes, yes yes so you know so that was why i decided to kind of concentrate on that um, aspect hmm. now can you tell us a brief story of the foundation the mission how you've been supporting children and families people living with disabilities we do why did you pack all of them you know it's a different case to dealing with special kids kids mm -hmm. with autism mm -hmm. and all of that but you're dealing with vulnerable people, you're mm. dealing with people, uh, widows, you're dealing mm. with um, mm -hmm. um, cancer survivors. Mm. How did you decide to pack all of them <laughs> in one category? You're not a medical doctor. Do you partner with any organization? Yes, I partner with a lot of organizations. With lots of organizations. Well, if with, uh, with cancer, I have an organization mm -hmm. that I, before I even started the um, um, the foundation, the foundation yes, okay. yes yes i used to volunteer for a lot of um, organization for widows it has always been my thing especially um young widows mm -hmm. and so since i started um, an organization for 
you know, special needs children, I decided to, you know, put them under um, the same umbrella. They're all vulnerable um, people. But you know, they are all vulnerable people, mm -hmm. but still in different cases. Still now, what we're talking cases. about seeing a gynecologist, we yes, can see gynecologist yes, yes, for so. FGM, mm -hmm. we can see gynecologist mm -hmm. for um, what's this popular um, illness that almost every lady has. And there will be a lump in the stomach. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can say gynecologist for different mm -hmm, things, mm -hmm. but then they see one person. In yes, 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 yes. In your case now, you are a family lawyer. Hmm? Does the law thing intertwine with your family? Yes. Or yes. does it obstruct it? No, it doesn't. Because we are talking about their rights. And that is one of the major issues they have. Then you have to shed more light on, on is there any law in the 1999 Constitution as amended that talked about the law of disabled? No, we have uh, the 1999 uh, Constitution protects everybody, mm -hmm. notwithstanding, you know, uh, whoever they are, notwithstanding who you mm -hmm. are, you know, yeah, hey, yes. So PWDs are covered. Mm -hmm. You understand? But we do have special laws. We have uh, disability laws and all that that protect special people. Can you shed more light on what these laws entails? You know, discrimination against okay. um, uh, persons with disability, the right to health, right to association, mm -hmm. and so many um, other rights like that. So yes. how many cases have you successfully handled? Okay, well, yeah, I've handled many cases. Sometimes I don't handle it personally. I take it to um, agencies concerned about that. And, um, but um, when it comes to um, rights of uh, persons and children with disability, uh, you know, most of these children are either molested, mm -hmm. especially uh, by close uh, no, I was, family. I was coming to yes. that. Mm -hmm close family members, we have been able to handle, you know, some, some, some cases mm. that's been successful. Mm. Rape cases, pedophile, is very common among the female, but then we have similar thing among the male. Some yes, male yes. guys, male children, I mean, mm -hmm. have been raped by their fellow male, yes, some yes. Uh, religious leaders, mm -hmm. among others. Mm. I mean, people have gotten the courage to come out to speak to and how have you helped them the mental health are part of it. How have we helped them get justice? How have we helped them go back to their normal self? Well, I can't stand to everything. We you know we have a um, department. Well, when it comes to um, the Lagos State, no, Lagos State has facility for all this, you okay. know, Lagos State laws covers all this, especially when it comes to um, abuse. We have the special court for okay. that. And we also have um, therapists that manages you know cases like this mm -hmm. so in such case i usually refer them to um the lagos state um, they get attended to? They, yeah they do they do they get they get attended to when it comes to this i give it to um lagos state government mm -hmm. they get attended to would you please share a story uh, of one of your many cases that baffled you and swept you off your feet <sighs> The issue about, um, especially when it comes to um, children living with disability, you know, because of the stigmatization, they usually don't follow the case to the end. Mm. You understand? Okay, so when they bring, there's a particular girl, I think she was um, six years old or something like that, that was molested by the uncle. And she was able to, you know, though she had um, verb, um she, she, had, uh, she, she wasn't verbal, but she was able to point to the corporate. Oh, she can't talk? No, she can't talk. Most of them are non-verbal. Oh. You understand? Which makes it uh, more difficult. difficult yes. Yeah. But she was able to point to the particular person that, this is the person that touched me. This is the person that touched me. I know, and they were so, and the mother was so furious. She was like, I want justice for my child. I want justice. For so the first thing we did, was to go to um, um, last um, that's um, the state, uh, yes, um, the uh, Mirabel uh, Center. Okay. Yes, that's the first place we went to, you know, for testing and all that. Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, they did the test, and it, of course, it was obvious that the child had been um, sexually, you know, molested. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, so I wanted to meet up with the. Corporates and all that and all that, and 
they wouldn't allow me. The mother cried. The father said, oh, this is a family matter. And, and that's always the uh, case with yes. so mm. many of them, you know. Um, based on the child's uh, condition, they just feel it's not something they should publicize that is going to stigmatize the child and more, the family, or the family more. Mm -hmm. But um, the good news is that at least we know that these things are happening. Mm -hmm. And so we take preventive um, measures against such. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. that's, that's a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Well, at this point, we have to go on a short break. When we return, we'll be talking more into your foundation, your person, because this program is aimed at promoting sanity. This program is aimed at inspiring young people to mm -hmm. become whatever they want to mm -hmm. be in society yeah viewers at home you've heard it all this is just the first part of the interview we'll go on a short break right now to return with the concluding part of the interview please stay with us <music> It's a pleasure to have you back. You're also on to the program Amazing Amazon. Like I said earlier, this is the program where we get to motivate everybody in the first sectors of the economy. And now, just before we went in a short break, we were talking about the story of uh, a woman, a rape case of a special child. And we, we are still having a conversation with the family lawyer, the owner of the foundation. She's a businesswoman. She's everything, everything, and everything. Now, I want to talk about the education of special kids. Okay. A special child cannot go to a normal school. Okay. I've seen a movie before where, and a life story, yeah. I've seen a movie before where a woman didn't notice at early age that a child is a special child. She took the child to a normal school at a normal age, a child should go to school. But then she was called by her, the child kept on crying non-stop. Then she realized, she, was, she took the child to the hospital before she realized that she was told that the child is a special child. Now, what schools do special children attend and how easy or uneasy is it to, to, to fund their education? Well, um, a child with special needs can go to any school. Any school? Yes, uh, can go to a mainstream schools. Um, according to the SD goals, um, as the SDG, Sustainable Development, development goals. goals, yes. Um, they're campaigning for inclusive education. You mm. understand? It's not just about um, um, going to school. Mm. I'm uh, sorry to quote you short. Don't yes. you think it's best for them to be within their peers? Uh, apparently, I've been seeing a page on TikTok recently. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been seeing that. School mm -hmm. of the Blind. Uh, I think I've been there for that. Yaba or yeah. Sulu. Yes, not yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm, not say, I, I'm not against... Um, Okay. You know, um, secluded or sec uh, Yes, I'm not against okay. that. Do, do you understand? But um, due to research and all that, um, the, the, there's a, a new theory that, that is best for a child, a child with special needs, to be amongst her peers, mm. either with uh, special needs or without. It, it has to do with inclusion. Okay. You know, it's like. Um, when they are just with the same kind of, um, maybe with, with the same kind of um, condition, it's like you're excluding them from the society. Sure. It's segregation. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah, well, it has its advantage as, uh, that is segregation um, education. You know, it has its advantage because, you know, they are like you're able to concentrate and, you know, help them and all that. Well, there are some conditions that, well, it's just best for them. No, that, those special schools is just you know best for them, but you know with the new research, with the new development, where a lot of children are able to thrive in inclusive schools, mm. in inclusive schools because it's not just about learning, mm -hmm. it's socialization, and that they're learning from other people. Mm -hmm. They're able to thrive, learning other things. You know, you are with the same kind of, you are doing the same thing. Yes. But you are with other people with different abilities, with mm -hmm. um, you know other abilities. All the competition. You, you, you want to copy. Mm. You're imitating. You want to stand up, you know, and work just like them. Mm. Do you understand? Uh -huh. So it, it, it's just um, that. That is why a lot of. Um, um, advocates are advocating for inclusive education. Mm -hmm. Well, the special needs schools too, they have easy. their own huge benefits. Yes, yeah. yes. But do you think it will be easy to have a special child in a normal school, considering our kids of nowadays don't even want to associate with 
kids with dreads. They are not special kids, mm -hmm. but kids with dreads that will, your mask called dada. Mm -hmm. They don't want to associate them because they feel like, oh, these kids, they are segregating mm -hmm. them, calling them names, not playing with them in school. And you know, in a way, it makes low self-esteem kick in among the students. Because in a class of like 25 and mm -hmm. like 20 of them are calling you names, mm -hmm. the remaining five playing with you are playing with you just for maybe, let's just talk to you so it won't mm -hmm. faint. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it also affects these children and it grows low self-esteem in them? We live in a society. There will always be different attitude. It, it depends on you. By the time you are great, as a child? As, even as a child. What I'm trying to say is that inclusion is an attitude. Mm -hmm. It's something you have to teach them. Mm -hmm. It's something you have to show them. Mm -hmm. Children are innocent beings. You know, they are made of love. They are empaths, natural empaths. It's not what you are, you know, teaching them. It's not what you're showing them that makes the difference. You understand what I'm saying? Ch children just want to, they, ju they just want to play. Yes. They are not saying you differently. Yes. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Either you are sitting on the wheelchair or you're sitting. Is we adults that are teaching them differently, yes. that are making them see that, oh, this child is different from who you are. That's and thank God for advocacy. Hmm. Thank God for, you know, um, you know, advent of social media. We have lots of cases where we, we talk about um, autism, cerebral palsy. You know, you see children thrive. Mm -hmm. You see the children able to do so many things that naturally we think they are not able to achieve. Mm -hmm. You know, now we understand that it is not, it, it, it is not the way we see them. They are, they are just, it's not about them being special or different. It is the way we accept them. It's the way we include them. It's the way we, we decide, you know, to embrace them. They are just, they are humans just like us. Mm. Now, let me ask, mm. how would you advise, okay, then let's get to the advice. Okay, okay. Can you mention some types of special cases to us and at what age would you advise a woman? Or what are the symptoms uh, a woman would see in a child that would make her know that, oh, this is a special child? And then a report says some special children have no, no, no history of special distance mm -hmm. in their family lineage mm -hmm. and they end up having just one. What causes this one off birth? Or when it comes to um, um, disabilities, there are different kinds of disabilities. Okay. Some are generic, some are being inherited, some are due to diseases, some um, during childbirth, labor, pregnancy, there are different factors. So you can't classify them or categorize them as one. Do you understand? It may be due to labor, it may be due to drugs. Hmm. Do you understand? It may be due to so many, many factors. And some disability comes after uh, birth. Hmm. Do you understand? That's postnatal. Yes. Some pre before and some um, due to genetics. Do you understand? Uh -huh. So there are, there are different, different factors. Uh, but it's very, very, um, it, that's why it's very, very necessary and very compulsory. You, once you're pregnant, go for your antenatal. Don't just think, ah, oh, it's something I can undo, it's something. No, go for your antenatal. Take your, there are some disabilities you can actually prevent. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. There are some disabilities Abilities that you can. Disabilities like? Even um, there are some cerebral palsy that you can prevent. You know, cerebral palsy can be caused uh, by uh, prolonged labor, mm -hmm. refusal to do, um, what is it called, C-section because of your beliefs or lack of funds and all that. And the child is already stressed. Mm -hmm. You understand? Those are, those are, you know, disabilities you can prevent. While well, some, you, is, you can't prevent it. It happens. So the best thing is, how do I manage it? Yes. How do I, you know, early intervention? Where do I go to to seek for help and, and support and all that? What are one notice in it? You know, when you give it to a child, just, oh, a child is a child, a baby is a baby. At age, uh, day, uh, day eight, day 40, and all of that. What are those things you notice? What are those basic things? We understand the fact that they are different okay. special kids. What are those things we notice in a child that will make one look okay? This is my well, child there. Yeah, it, 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 number, one, as a, number one, as a child, you have uh, a maternal instinct. 
if you if you looking at your child you feel there's something just not adding up not right you know the child is not reaching milestone like the other peers mm -hmm. some of some some people will say ah, don't worry she will she or he will grow it and everything please straight to the hospital mm -hmm. you know there's no harm in going to the hospital nobody will bite you there's no harm in asking questions do you understand? Because there are some things you can um, avert on time. And some, if you don't do it on time, that's just the end. Do you understand what I'm saying? So your child is not maybe walking when he or she ought to walk. The child is not smiling when he or she ought to smile. Mm -hmm. The child is not moving his hands. Or, you know, is she or he is not doing it the way other children are doing it. Mm. Do you understand? Seek medical um, help immediately. Mm. Seek medical And once they tell you that, okay, there's something wrong, you know, um, your child has been diagnosed, make sure you get a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And it's okay, there's something wrong with your child, but we need to do this, we need to do it. Make sure you know your child's diagnosis. A lot of parents don't even know their child's diagnosis. They just know that there's something wrong with their children. Mm. Even up to 12 years, you'll be asking, them, okay, what is your child's diagnosis? Let us know how we can help the child. They'll say, ah, we don't know. When we went to the hospital, the child said, my child, there's something wrong with my child. Mm. Said, and we've been going to the hospital. They don't even know mm. the child's diagnosis. How will they help their children if they don't know the child's diagnosis? Make sure you get a diagnosis, you know, and make sure you follow up medically. Mm. And as a mother, as a father, you need to also take care of yourself mm -hmm. mentally, okay. emotionally, because... It takes a lot. It takes a lot from you. A special woman, um, a special mother, I mean, once said she, there was a time she went to the hospital and she wanted to pee and uh, she has a special child. So she wanted to give the child to the woman to do that. Please, ma, mm -hmm. I want to quickly go and pee. And the next thing she said, she said, my bum was salo. I, I, I apologize for your breast because I don't drop your drop child, child and run away. So yes. she felt really bad. No, I, I, Is that agency in charge of taking care of the mental health of these mothers? Because honestly, it's not easy. And spe some special child are not like they will get a particular age and the help will reduce. Like maybe after I like, get to the age of seven, eight, nine, they will stop needing help. Some before ever continue to need help to the mm -hmm. age of 15, 18, 19, mm -hmm. and all of that. So, is there an agency in charge of the mental health of these parents, especially the mothers? Yes, we have a lot of um, NGOs that deal with uh, mental health of uh, mothers of children with special... Even fathers need it too. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. <laughs> fathers need it. We have a lot of... We too, we do that. We support mentally, um, physically and all mm -hmm. that because we know before you can take care of another person, even your child, you need to be okay mentally. Mm. And like I said, it's huge for them. Mm -hmm. So they need, we, we need to make sure that they're okay, mm. you know, mentally, before we can now talk about supporting their children and, you know, encouraging them to give love to their children. Mm. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Now, can you provide some basic information about how to take care of a special child from day one of bringing the schools, the food to eat, what to notice, what to do while pregnant, what to avoid while pregnant, what to do before even getting married uh, to your partner. Can you provide us with basic information of these things? Okay. Once uh, your child has been diagnosed, and before, let's start before, from okay, pregnancy. Before, let's start you know from. there will be some. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Tests. Even before you get pregnant, mm -hmm. there are some tests you and your partner ought to do. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Of course, we know about the sickle cell, whatever. So yeah. this is, is beyond love. I understand the emotions that come it with love. I love this love. person. I love, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it, I'm not saying it's beyond prayers, but there's just some, you know, <laughs> cases that can't be prevented. Mm. You know, I believe everything is spiritual. God has opened our eyes to this um, expert, medical expert. They've told us that, okay, this particular people cannot marry this particular people. Do you understand? So you need to avoid. Know your status, your genotype, rectus factors, and all that. Be sure that yours matches with your, your partner. partner. Mm. That's uh, number one. After that, okay, you're pregnant. 
please, please, don't compare yourself with someone else. Mm. Ha, she's a strong man. She didn't even go for international. She didn't. Your case might be different. I think this is where you get to address the online doctors. Yes. Online. Uh, and give it to my get like like this. Look, Look everyone us. is different. Yes. You are made of a different substance. Everyone is because we are made of so many factors: emotional, psychological, um, biological. What do, you, do you understand? Even from the same parents, I might have a child with autism and all that. My siblings might not have. So don't compare. Just make sure you follow. You know, do protocol. Go for your antenatal. Do the ask questions. That's one problem we have. A lot of um, uh, mothers are afraid to ask doctors questions. Do you understand? Either they are scared or they feel it's not necessary. And all that. Is your money? Is your right? Ask questions. There are sometimes they, they, another um, uh, uh, another um, cause for uh, of disability. You know, is also medical negligence. Mm. They are also humans. There are some things they may not spot, but you know. Something is telling you that there's something just not right. Insist. Hmm. Uh, do you, do, do yes, you get okay, it? Yeah. You know, just insist. You know your body. If you feel different, please insist or seek a second opinion. There are so many cases that have been prepared because they, they, they sought second opinion. So, you know, after this... Um, Make sure you avoid a call. Well pregnant. You well pregnant. Oh, well very, breastfeeding. Yeah, you are well, and well breastfeeding. Okay. It's very, very there's um this um, um something a call what a syndrome that causes a, a disability in children too. Drugs, you know, drug abuse, excess, you know, just avoid anything, you know, because you know, your friend drank um, a call and nothing happened. Mm. Your case might just be different. Difference, yes. You understand? So avoid anything that could cause harm to you and um, your baby. And prevention, um, your baby is diagnosed with um, um, one disability or so. That is not the end of the world. Mm. You think so? It's not. It's not. It's not. We've seen... Uh, mothers of children with special needs doing very well. You know, their child giving them strength. Mm. Things they, 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 they never believed they could achieve. They are achieving it through their pain. Mm. You know, doing so many things, becoming authors because of their children, being able to fabric. That we have a, a special parent, one of our members, She's a, a father that has a child with um, cerebral palsy, you know, because of the love he has for his daughter. That's the first part. It's not even he's not even well educated like um, you know other fathers and everything. You know, he would fabricate. He's talented with it and with his hands. He, he will fabricate. You know, all this. You know, they really need a lot of gadgets. Yes. Mm -hmm. He will fabricate this. He will go online. He will do this. No, he fabricates um, cerebral palsy wheelchair and sells. So, in the foreign, uh, the imported um, cerebral palsy, which is a specialized wheelchair, is expensive. It ranges from 250 to 1 million and above. Oh, wow. Now, he sells his own for less. Mm. So, he's able to solve other people's problem. Do you understand? Mm. And, uh, based on his own. own yes, based on his own problem. And he's making money from it. So, the child is a blessing to him. Mm. Now let's talk about cancer survivors. You also deal with cancer survivors. There are different types of cancer, mm -hmm. leukemia, prostate cancer, breast cancer, and all of that and all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is believed that it's very hard to scale through chemotherapy sessions. Yes. Have you ever dealt with a cancer patient, a cancer survivor? Because, okay, he or she has now survived and he or mm -hmm. she is now telling the story. How was it like? How was the journey like? How did she survive? <sighs> Um, like I said, I'm a volunteer, so I'm one of the key volunteers to um, to an organization that deals with um, colorectal cancer, and I've seen a lot. I also have friends that um, went through some some are no more, and some are still alive. You know, everything has to do with 
I, I think it's even sometimes beyond the medical intervention. Mm. You know, I, I think sometimes it's psychological, you know, believing that I'll survive this. And of course, ensuring that you go for all the medical tests or whatever, or whatever, whatever, following up your medical follow ups and everything. Then, support having mm. a strong support system mm. that is what kills most of these um, cancer patients before their time. You know, well, when I you have a strong I, support I, I system, I disagree at this point because mm. it is believed that everyone I mean helps those who help themselves. Some cancer patients have given up on their own. Mm. They are never ready to try. They are not ready to even make things work. They are just tired of... They've seen themselves as burden. And because they don't have a strong support system. Mm. You know, your partner or your friends are always there for you, cheering you on. I have a friend that just died uh, recently. Um, uh, we met um, during NYC camp. Very sweet girl. And she survived one of the most terrible cancer. I think her diagnosis was like five years and it was stage four cancer. And she was able to survive it till just, um, just last month. You understand? She had a very strong support system. Her family members, her loved ones. And of, of course, that, would, that could, uh, even till her dying days, I went to see her just like two weeks to her, you know, she was still, she, she, she was still, um, she, she, she still had this, positive attitude that she wanted to leave. Mm, yes, so although, yes, although it was her time. But for her to survive that long, like I said, she had a strong support system. When you have a strong support system, it will be hard for you to give up on yourself because other people are not giving up on you. Mm. For any vulnerable person, they need a strong support, support system. system. Mm. Well, this is what we'll be bringing the interview to a closer. We have to ask for advice. Advice to parents of special kids, advice to young people looking to get married, advice on how to deal and live happily, and advice on you being a good support system to anybody in these shows. Okay, yeah. The, my first advice is just love yourself. Love yourself enough. Love yourself enough to be able to love others mm -hmm. because things happen no one prayed for eventualities like yes. uh, special needs children mm -hmm. but when you have enough love for yourself you are able to pour out that love to someone else that's parental sure you have a child with special needs i've seen these children thrive even those that think uh, those that are not you know receiving therapies and all due to lack of funds these children thrive because of the love they are getting from their parents. Mm. But please take care of yourself first. Mm -hmm. Love yourself. You cannot give what you don't have. Yes. Do you understand? Just love yourself and know that, like I said, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, this is where we draw the quarter to our end. But as usual, we get to play five minutes game. This game is meant to also understand the guest personality more. At this point, I'll be asking you this or that. This is a game where we ask you this or that. You get to pick one of the two. And mm -hmm. if it's both, you get to choose both. And if it's none, you get to say none. But then we have to be as fast as possible. As fast as possible. So this or that, this or that. Gowns or skirts? Gowns. Reading or talking? Reading. Court case or mediation? Mediation. Uh, city or countryside? City. Giving a speech or writing a paper? Writing a paper. Heels or flat shoes? Heels. Shoes or sneakers? Sneakers. Nine to five or business? Business. Money or fame? Money. Woo! <laughs> Money. <laughs> yes. The last girl she had had a problem choosing between money or fame because she wanted the money, no, she no. wanted the fame. No, no. But yes, this is where we draw the curtain of today's episode of Amazing Amazon. I say very thank you to you for staying with us. I say very thank you to you for yeah, keeping it to date with us every time. But what you can do is to follow the conversation on YouTube. Just press Amazing Amazon. Our previous episodes will pop up. You can get to learn from the previous ones and you can also get to learn from the new ones. And finally, can you please drop your social media handles for people looking forward to, to spare, seek attention on their special kids or for advice or partnership or anything. 
please you can go to our um, IG uh, page, Super Parents uh, Foundation. Mm -hmm. it also, our Facebook page, Super Parents Support um, Foundation. Mm -hmm. you find us there. And this is where I wrap up the show for today. My name is Omoto Shola Shari Makisei. God bless Nigeria. And don't forget, Elf is what? Bye for now.